So in recent weeks, there's been some allegations made against me from conversations that were posted from me and another person dating back to five years ago in 2018. First and foremost, I'd like to apologise to anyone and everyone involved. I'm going to be as open and honest as possible whilst tackling the main questions. I'd like to interject and say sorry for this response taking so long. Given the severity of the situation, I needed time to process everything and give this attention and respect that it deserves. These were messages of me making deeply inappropriate flirtatious messages when I was 19 years old and the girl in question was 16 years old. Due to the three year age gap and given that it was legal, I thought this sort of behaviour was okay as a 19 year old teenager. Although the age of consent in the UK is 16, I should have known better to interact with someone that was three years younger than me. My attempts at flirting using dark humour and deeply inappropriate sexual remarks wasn't quirky or funny, it was inappropriate and weird. Although at the time I thought it wasn't, it's now something I look back and see as heavily inappropriate. Never at any point was I aware that I was making them uncomfortable, but I can now understand that she might have not known how to express that at the time. This been allegations that I did or intend to groom this person. Grooming is when a person builds a relationship with a child, a young person or an adult who's at risk so they can abuse them and manipulate them into doing things. The abuse is usually sexual or financial but it can also include other illegal acts. I did not manipulate or abuse this person into doing anything. I did not groom this person. These were just inappropriate messages between a 19 year old and a 16 year old and nothing ever came out of this. I never met this person. I never had a relationship with this person. This was just a friendship that would sometimes turn inappropriate and I am fully responsible for that and I am so sorry that this ever happened. Some people think that this was me abusing my power against a fan. I was a very small YouTuber then. She mentions herself that she was not a fan of mine and didn't know who I was. I did know this person months before they turned 16 and nothing inappropriate ever happened then. My intention wasn't to wait for her to turn 16 before any of these conversations took place. It just happened and I'm fully responsible. I cannot apologise enough for letting this happen. I'm fully aware that my intention behind this does not matter as you can still emulate this type of behaviour without realising. I was immature and wasn't aware that this behaviour could have been perceived as grooming. This was nothing more sinister or calculated than two teenage friends flirting where one of them should have known better and that was me. And I take full accountability for that and I'm sorry for even allowing this to happen in the first place. This was someone I still felt like I was friends with, so much so that we were in contact 24 hours before she posted these statements. She texted me to tell me that her cousin is in my Discord community, to which I said that's hilarious, slay. This was someone that I genuinely considered a friend, hence why sometimes I felt like these deeply inappropriate jokes and remarks were okay to be making at the time. Some of them were even inside jokes, such as this one, which was a reference to Chris Ingham. Given the mutual understanding of the subject, I thought this was an okay joke to be making. Looking back, I can understand how this could be misconstrued, and I'm sorry for ever making her uncomfortable. I met this person whilst I was trying to build my YouTube community. This was before I was a full-time YouTuber. I used to go on bigger YouTubers' accounts, click on their followers, and follow many at a time, as well as following any big stan account that I seen on my timeline in hopes that they would follow me back, check out my content and hopefully spread the message to their friends. This was purely to grow my community whilst also making friendships within the space and not for any sexual or ulterior motive. I would have never used my position to intentionally manipulate a situation into something sexual. Even though I wasn't a full time YouTuber, had around 10,000 followers and feel like I didn't have much social influence, I've learned over the years about power imbalances and how an age gap and even the smallest of social presences can skew the appropriate of a conversation and I had no idea that this could have ever been misconstrued as this. Although these conversations felt consensual and reciprocated, they should have never happened in the first place. That was my responsibility and I can only profusely apologise for this. It's been five years since then and I've learned about boundaries, I've learned about what's okay and what's not okay to say. During this time period, I was in a lot of group chats with fans and non-fans, from ages of people who were 14 all the way up to people that were in their late 20s. People have questioned why I was in and participated in group chats of people of all ages. It was not for any any other reason and to help me cultivate a community in order to grow as a small YouTuber. Twitter group chats were used the same way Discord is used now. They were used for promoting whilst also building a close relationship between the creator and the viewer. Every single one of my close friends also had a group chat just like this, so that's why I thought it was okay to participate in such, but upon reflection I can understand how weird and inappropriate it was. A lot of people that were in these group chats have stated that I said things that made them uncomfortable. I never meant to make anyone feel uncomfortable with the things I would say or, or do in these group chats, and I'm genuinely sorry if this was ever the case. I prioritise building a community instead of prioritising being a responsible adult and content creator. This is something I should have never participated in in the first place and I should have never been adding young impressionable adults and teens into group chats that I didn't know. As I grew on social media and as I did become a full-time YouTuber, 
I realised how people's perception of me changed. I'm aware now that there's an immediate power imbalance and that makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm very aware of that position now, but five years ago as a 19 year old small YouTuber that was just doing YouTube for a hobby, I would have never placed myself in the category of a power dynamic. I was young myself, but I was still old enough to know better, but I didn't. These situations should have never happened, but they did. And I'm fully responsible and I take full accountability of that. The way I used to act when I was 18 and 19 is not behaviour that I'm proud of, but instead carry guilt and shame for it. The way I feel about this isn't new to me. I'm embarrassed and ashamed to admit that I participated in these conversations. I was 18 and 19 years old during all of this. I'm now 24 years old. It's been five years since then. The behaviour that I thought was okay when I was 18 and 19 years old is not behaviour that I think is okay now or have done for a very long time. Another person and release this statement that I'd like to address. I've been avoiding talking publicly about the Lewis Bucking discourse as I was shocked someone was so kind to me could have been so predatory to the people I knew. But after some reflection, I've realised that even his kindness towards me isn't as innocent as I thought. I followed Lewis when he had little to no subscribers, would regularly interact with his content and was a fan of his work. In 2019-20, not sure the exact year, I was added to a group chat where Lewis would handpick girls who were fans to be added into a Twitter group chat. He would regularly be active on chat as well as DMing girls privately. I was one of them. I don't remember receiving any concerning messages, but I do remember Lewis regularly sending me money to buy things for myself. This has been worded in a way that I was some weird sugar daddy, which I just wasn't. Catherine tweeted saying that she wanted this palette that she couldn't afford, so I just sent her the money so she could buy it. And she was really appreciative and that warmed my heart. It was a way for me to say thank you to her for supporting the videos over the years. Catherine states that I used to regularly send her money. So I went on my PayPal statements from the last five years and from all the money that I used to regularly send her, I could only find one. Knowing that I've done this on two or three occasions for my viewers, I thought that this could have been maybe two or three times. Even if there's a another one that PayPal can't find, there was nothing regular about this. YouTubers doing giveaways or buying viewers items from their wish lists is not something that's uncommon. Catherine, if you're watching, I literally just want to say thank you for supporting me by giving something back. That was it. There, there was nothing else to it, I promise. I know my past actions that have came to light now may be questioning this, but I promise you there was no other motive. This was also during lockdown 2020, and whilst I was fortunate to keep my job, I was aware that some people weren't able to, and they weren't able to buy the things they like. Hence why I thought this was a nice thing to do. To clear things up, if you want to dislike me because I inappropriately messaged someone that was three years younger than me, as well as participated in just any inappropriate conversations, that's fine you are entitled to that. But if you want to dislike me because you think I'm a power-hungry predator, a groomer, or a paedophile, that is just false. I'd like to directly address Megan and any other girl or person that was uncomfortable by the things I've said or done when I was 18 or 19 years old. What felt consensual and reciprocated at the time might not have been on your end, and I'm fully responsible for that. I'm fully responsible for causing you or any other's discomfort. I should have known better, and this should have never happened in the first place. But it did, and I can only profusely apologise for all of this. Moving forward, I'm more than happy to discuss this privately with you or anyone that feels like they were mistreated by me during this period in order to bring you closure. I've tried my best to cover everything that I felt was necessary. I'm sorry if I let anyone down, but for the time being, I'd like to move on and take some time off. Thanks for listening.